The one and only in the world, Sky Park, is another item of interest in the planetarium. A broad range of astronomical instruments and devices is located in the open air. The idea of this remarkable park was conceived by Moscow astronomers on the planetarium stuff as early as in 1939. In 1941 the project was approved, but the Second World War altered a lot of things. So, the astronomical site of the Moscow Planetarium was opened only in 1947 to celebrate the 800th anniversary of the capital. In 2005-2010, the unique museum on the roof of the Planetarium was reconstructed on a new technological level on the basis of the drafts by and under general management of Stanislav Vasilievich Shorokov, planetarium scientific consultant. In the course of the large-scale reconstruction, the lists of the exhibits increased considerably. There appeared some things from the world centers of the stargazing civilization, in the form of the models, of course. One of such models is in front of you in the moment. It is a 1 to 5 scaled model of the famous obelisk of the Egyptian queen Hatshepsut that was erected a thousand and a half years BC. Noman, which is a vertical column erected on a leveled ground, is an ancient astronomical sun instrument. At noon of the day, its shadow is the shortest. It will coincide with the geographical meridian or, or line of longitude and shows direction south, north, precisely. If we follow the movement of the gnomon's shadow during the day, we will see that it goes around the obelisk with the sun, or clockwise. During the first part of the day, the shadow gets shorter and shorter, and in the afternoon, it gets longer in the like manner. There isn't an easier task in the world than to turn a gnomon into a sundial. For that, you need to tilt its vertical stuff to the north. That is how the great horizontal sundial was made, which is built in the form of a stylobate monument to the conquerors of space, near the All Russia Exhibition Center. This candidate for a gnomon is located at the point where Prospect Mira forks. It is erected along the meridian, according to the requirements, but it is tilted to the south and thus not fit to be a sundial. The arrow-like monument was built by Mikhail Osipovich Barsh, the same architect that built the planetarium. We bent Barsh's stylobate through zenith to Polaris, put the dial on the ground and got ourselves a horizontal sundial, one of the biggest in Europe. The height of the instrument, as well as the height of the Queen Hatshepsut Gnomon, is 5 meters, 35 centimeters. The diameter of the dial is 12 meters. Every other of the hours is marked with figures, even numbers only. The smallest graduation is 10 minutes. Here we have one more model of a sundial. The Indian wind stares into the sky, Samrat Yantra. In this structure, the rails of the stairs that lead up to the Polaris are the gnomons. In the morning, the left rail casts shadow on the west wing of the dial. At noon, when the sun is on the meridian, both the scales are lighted completely and in the afternoon the right rail starts indicating the time. The dial is similar to the rim of the wheel, the axis of which is the rails. As to the appearances, our model of this historical sundial differs considerably from the original. First, here in the north, Polaris stands about twice as high above the horizon if compared to India. Therefore, the staircase turned out twice as steep. Secondly, 
the Indians had the curves of the dial spread to each side making 90 degrees and work as the sundial sunrise to sunset. Our device is limited by the two curves of 60 degrees, which is 4 plus 4 hours of work. But in spite of all these differences, the operating functions of this device and its traditional form are preserved. The most popular thing in our days is the Analemma sundial. The time may be known by the shadow of an interactive vertical gnomon, the role that any one of us may take upon oneself. In order to know what time is it now, one must just stand on the name of the current month. The names are cut on the specially calculated scale. The shadow will show the time. The Sky Park is indeed the city of the sun. All exhibits here work in collaboration with the celestial bodies. The armillary sphere, one of the most complex astronomical instruments of the ancient times, is no exception. The sphere became to be applied extensively in Alexandria of Egypt. They used it to measure curves and angles in the sky from the time about 300 years before Christ. But mostly, Amula was used to measure the visible motions of the Sun, the Moon and the planets among the stars. More complex than simple rotation of the starry sky. The device in front of us is the Tsvetov's armillary sphere. It was built right here, at the astronomical site of the planetarium, in 1947, by Ruvim Ilyich Tsvetov, the managing director of the planetarium. First of all, it is a very large sphere. One can even walk into it. Its rings may be projected to the real sky. Would be hard to think up a better way of demonstrating how conventional astronomical curves correspond with real sky. The authors decorated the sphere with the celestial bodies of the solar system. As a result of it, the Tsvetkov's armula became not only a measuring, but an illustrating device as well. The Sky Park devices unwrap in front of the visitors the fascinating history of the astronomy development. The collection is unique. It includes sundials of different forms and modifications. A working model of the Stone Age Observatory, the Stonehenge, which is the oldest observatory on Earth, terrestrial and celestial globes, a model of the Pyramid of Cheops, Nabokov's umbrella with the non-setting constellations of the northern sky depicted on it, with Polaris in the middle, the Tree of Wandering, Geoscope, movable star map, and the line of Moscow Geographical Meridian. The greatest rarity among the sky power exhibits is the descent module of the spacecraft Vostok. Vostok, with Dami Ivan Ivanovich and Doug Zvezdichko on board, was launched on the 23rd of March 1961. Its safe return to Earth opened the gate to space for manned spacecrafts. In 2011, the Vostok Descent module, that was part of a private foreign collection at the time, was bought back by Evgeny Yurchenko, the chairman of Popov Investment Promotion Fund. 
So, on the 12th of June of 2011, this very real artifact from the Soviet space program was handed over to be displayed on the premises of the Moscow Planetarium. 